Once you've saved up $10,000, then it is so easy to save up the next $10,000 and then $30,000 and then $50,000 and in no time you're at $100,000. It's a daunting feeling when you have nearly no savings. But almost half of Canadians actually live paycheck to paycheck and have no money left to save at the end of the month. And even worse, in case of an emergency, one in four Canadians are unable to cover an unexpected expense of just $500. If this is more or less your financial situation, situation as well, then you're not alone. And don't panic, you can fix this. When we first moved to Canada, it took us a while until we could start saving again. But once we put our mind to it, we could very quickly save up $10,000, well for us there's a couple $20,000 in less than one year. So in this video today, I want to walk you through step by step how you too can save your first $10,000 within the next 8 months. Step 1 is to make a major paradigm shift. Making a paradigm shift means making a major shift in the way that you look at things. At first glance, you might see a tree here, but on second glance, you might see a cat and a mouse. Depending on what you focus on, you see different things. And the same goes with your finances. If you look at your non-existent savings and go, there's just nothing I can do about this, the economy, the cost of living, politics, etc., then you won't save anything ever. And if you can't save anything now, then you probably won't save anything in five years either. But if this janitor here could become a millionaire on his very low income, then so can you. If you can make this important paradigm shift and go, I know it will be difficult and uncomfortable, but I'm sure that there are ways that I haven't tried yet that can lead to savings, then you're on your way to success. And talking about shifting perspectives, to make these YouTube videos for you, I'm online almost all of the time. And lately, I've just become much more aware of how important it is to protect my online presence. And I learned that just by using a VPN, I can keep myself anonymous online and also protect my data. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network and the one I'm using and totally love is CyberGhost VPN. When your VPN is on, your IP address is hidden, making you anonymous on the web. It's as though you're browsing from different locations. All your traffic on the internet goes through an encrypted VPN tunnel, so you're protected from hackers who want to steal your data. Also, CyberGhost has a no-logs policy, so no one will know about your online activity. With CyberGhost VPN, you can also access geo-blocked content, movies, TV series that are available in other countries. On over 40 streaming platforms including Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, and many more. You can also use CyberGhost VPN to find the cheapest hotel and flight deals as depending on the country that you browse from, you'll oftentimes get shown different prices. It's very easy to use and great for beginners. Just change your online location in 3 clicks. And their 24-7 customer support is there if you ever need help. CyberGhost VPN has over 38 million users and has an excellent rating on Trustpilot. If you sign up to CyberGhost VPN now using my link in the description, it will only cost you $2.03 per month. And you'll also get 4 months for free, the best deal ever. And you can save even more money by sharing your CyberGhost VPN subscription with family and friends as it covers up to 7 devices. And it works on most operating platforms including Windows, Mac OS, Linux, iOS, Android, Smart TV and even gaming consoles. There's no risk in trying out CyberGhost VPN as there's a 45 day money back guarantee. So click on my link in the descriptions and try it out. Now back to the video. In step number 2 to save your first $10,000, you need to make one major decision. And I know it's so basic. Everyone knows that in order to save, you need to either spend less or earn more or spend less and earn more. There's just no other way around it. So start by making this one major decision. Option 1. Find a job that pays you significantly more and by significant, I mean $1,500 per month more at least. And you can keep your current lifestyle. And by the way, by lifestyle here, I don't mean living in a luxurious way. By lifestyle, I just mean the way that you live. Or if you can't find a higher paying job or you think that you can't at the moment, then you need to downsize your lifestyle. Decide now that you will make those hard changes no matter what it takes so that you can save up those $10,000 fast. Step number 3 is to personalize your savings goal. $10,000 in 8 months, that sounds like a great goal. But is there any significance to the number $10,000 or to the time frame of 8 months? Yes, perhaps if you're working towards a down payment or saving up for some other purchase. But to be frank, it's not really about the number $10,000 or 8 months. The bigger significance of this particular goal format, which is X dollars in X months, is that you set yourself a clear and also 
non-negotiable goal. And once you did that, you can be proud of yourself and tell yourself, yes, I did it. I actually managed to save up $10,000 in eight months or whatever amount you set yourself. You're no longer living off of your credit card and no longer living paycheck to paycheck. And once you've saved up $10,000, then it is so easy to save up the next $10,000 and then $30,000 and then $50,000 and in no time you're at $100,000. To strengthen your motivation, personalize your goal until you really feel that it is your goal. You set it yourself and you commit to it. Set yourself an amount that is motivating. For example, you could aim for $6,000 instead or $1,000 per month for six months or $12,000 within 12 months or any other number that is special to you. But make sure that you keep the time frame under one year or 12 months because you want to keep enough pressure. Step number four is to break down your savings goal. $10,000 in eight months. Hmm. To be realistic, in month one, you'll probably only save $100 to $200 because you're just starting to warm up or even $0. Don't beat yourself up. You're still wrapping your head around it and strategizing. But then in month two to eight, you got to step on that gas pedal and start saving $1,000 to $1,500 each month. It could look something like this. For example, month one, $200, month two, $800, month three, four, five, six, seven, eight, $1,500 per month. And this distribution might look very, very different for you. The important thing is just that you have a detailed plan of how much you want to save each month. Now, the next step is to come up with a savings plan. Now you know how much exactly you want to save each month, but the question is how are you going to do it? Assuming that your income remains the same, it means that you will need to reduce your expenses. But to reduce your expenses, first you need to know how much you are spending right now, or else you won't know whether or not you're already making enough cuts in your spending. So the first step that you need to do is to record your expenses. Let's say that this is how much you're spending in different categories. And remember guys, this is just an example. For example, on housing, $2,200, utilities, $100, groceries, $350, eating out, $250, transportation, $250, phone, $80, insurance, $20, personal and discretionary spending, so your shopping, etc., $220, subscriptions, $60. So your total spending right now is $3,530. The next step, more important, is to come up with a target budget for each item and calculate how much you can save on each item. And here's an example. On housing, previously you spent $2,200 and now you're planning to spend just $1,500. How? We'll talk about that later. So that means that you'll be able to save $700 per month from this category. On groceries, you previously spent, for example, $350, but your target budget now is to spend just $275, which saves you $75 per month or $600 in eight months. Now you continue with this and you play around with the numbers until you get to that $10,000 savings. And as you already noticed in this Excel sheet, to make the dent that you need in your expenses, you need to focus on the biggest expense. And that brings me to step number six, which is tackle big ticket expenses. You can definitely save a lot of money by changing small things here and there, buying cheaper toilet paper, making your own cleaning products and so on. But in order to get a significant amount of savings, and that's what we're looking for, you need to look at the biggest item. That on its own will probably make out about 50% of your total savings. And yes, as you all know, that is housing expenses. And I know this sounds contradictory. In such an economic situation where housing costs are skyrocketing, you are asking me to save on this item? Get real. But yes, exactly. Exactly because these costs are skyrocketing, you will need to make these bold decisions. That's if you really want to save. But if you say no, no, you just can't save on this item, then yes, there's no other way than to find a job that pays you one to $1,500 or more. Now, what's the solution? How can you possibly save on housing expenses? And I see two ways here. If you're renting, move to a cheaper place. And I know it's not easy. That means that you will need to downsize, move to a smaller place, or move further out, more to the outskirts of the city. But if that's not possible and you really need to stay stay within the city, then share a place. If you're single, then share an apartment with a friend, an acquaintance, and split the rent and the utilities. If you're a couple or a family, then consider renting a house with another family and splitting that rent. If you own a house or a large apartment and have a spare room, then make sure that you rent that out. Rent it out so that you can reduce your net expenses for housing. 
And I know this is uncomfortable. No one really likes to do this, but hear me out. You do not have to do this forever. You can downsize your housing for the next, let's say one, two, maximum three years. And hopefully by that time you've saved up that $10,000 or even 20 or $30,000. And hopefully, hopefully by that time your income has also increased. And this comes from personal experience. My husband and I, we rented a studio apartment that was just 320 square feet for about four years before we moved to this condo also a studio apartment which we bought and yes it required some adjustments in the beginning especially after moving from an almost 2,000 square feet house in Indonesia where we had so much space more than we needed but we don't regret that decision at all because we managed to save so much money now on to step number seven which is to cut out unnecessary expenses and this includes for example subscriptions that you don't use just imagine that 65 percent can Canadians have more than one streaming service subscription and 40% have access to three or more. This is just a waste of money, especially if you can't afford it. Because I don't know about you, but I definitely can't watch multiple shows at the same time. So cut down your subscriptions to maximum one subscription and also don't keep it running. For example, recently I've been watching the series Succession and The Last of Us and I've only subscribed to Crave for one month, after which I've unsubscribed. So by subscribing, pausing, subscribing, pausing your subscription services, you can save a lot of money. The other thing to do is to reduce your phone bill. Ask yourself if you really need that $80 or even $100 phone plan or could you get by with only $35 or $40. The other thing to cut really difficult are personal expenses, your shopping buying clothes so one way to do this to make it easier is to set yourself your clothing budget for example let's just say that is 200 or 300 dollars per year and instead of just shopping indiscriminately try and buy less frequently but better quality instead of buying something every month that costs ten dollars here twenty dollars there aim for a few high quality pieces but just buy let's say five new pieces this year now on to step number eight which is to tackle your grocery bill or your food bill. The third largest expense of all is probably food. Try and strategize between cooking at home versus eating out and takeout. Cooking at home is always cheaper. It doesn't mean that you cannot eat out or cannot do any takeout at all. It just means that you have to limit it severely. Make a decision for how many times you allow yourself to eat out or to do takeout. Let's just say that is one time per week. And for all the other meals you cook at home and you pack yourself that lunch for the office. And by the way, I have a whole video on how to save on your grocery bill and I will link it up here for you to watch. Now, step number nine is to make lifestyle changes. And this is more about the smaller day-to-day -day decisions and your mindset. Starting now, change your whole philosophy of spending. Before you buy anything, ask yourself first, can I do without this? Can I borrow this? Can I do this thing I need to do another way without buying this tool? Do I really need this butter container to store my butter or can I just use an old Tupperware box? And do I really need this minced meat masher or can I just use a fork? Do I really need five types of cleaning products? Change the way you approach shopping entirely and in no time you will be saving a lot of money. Step number 10 and the last step is to transfer the money that you saved into a separate account or a sub account. You need to have a separate account to put your savings in so the money doesn't get mixed up with the money that you use for your daily expenses. And also the other benefit of having a separate account is that you can see your money growing in that account which is very motivating so with every paycheck that you get transfer a designated amount that you want to save into this account when your salary comes in take off the amounts that you need for your rent or your mortgage which are the biggest items and then transfer your target savings into that account and no matter what happens try and get by with the remainder so if you follow these steps especially those on mindset and paradigm shifts then you will be able to save up ten thousand dollars in no time and secure your financial future so guys, I hope this video was useful for you. Let me know in the comments below which of these steps you found most insightful. And if you have already saved up $10,000, then also let me know in the comments below how you did it. And also don't forget to check out CyberGhost VPN. Click on my link in the descriptions below to get their awesome deal for just $2.03 per month plus four months for free. This application will protect your data while you browse and give you full access to all blog content on the internet. And if you change your mind for whatever reason, you can get your money back within 45 days. So there's no risk. As always, thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you again pretty soon. Bye.